NUS, I like the variety of courses it offers. It's got a solid education program. Best part is, it's all connected. All you need is a single sign-on NUSNet user ID. You can use it from matriculation to graduation. You probably know that at NUS, all modules have gone online. Timetables, course materials, rosters. So we can prepare well ahead for class. But that's just the basics. The Center for Instructional Technology, or CIT, supported by the Computer Center, the Faculty IT Unit, and the NUS Library, has made teaching and learning at NUS virtual and relevant. Online modules are really about making everything accessible to the students. Recommended readings with library links, secured assessments, and additional courses all complement what's already offered in the modules. You can even receive course announcements via SMS. Well, having notes on Ivy Early allows us to think of questions before lectures. If, if Ivy Early doesn't work or something breaks down, it actually has quite an impact. It's a great tool, and it's a great thing that there's such a good team behind the tool. Ivy Early facilitates collaboration, active communication, assessment, and student feedback through its variety of integrated tools. Using Ivy Early, staff can supplement their courses very effectively. But what if you cannot make it for a lecture? Well, CIT has found a virtual solution to that through webcast. Oh, I love webcast. I remember last semester I was down with chicken pox and couldn't attend lecture for the whole week. So I turned to webcast and I could catch up with all my lectures. Webcast allows me to conduct my large class lectures at a moderate pace. I don't have to deliberately slow down or repeat my explanation too frequently for the slower learners. CIT has built-in cameras in lecture theatres. Once a request is made for a lecture to be webcast, CIT arranges for everything. And when it's done, the webcast is loaded online and accessed through IVLE. Okay, basically the time when I caught a flu bug, I couldn't come to school and it was a very important lecture on that particular day. So it was good because at a point in time, all I had to do was go online and it was just a click away. Those lectures are now on podcasts, making learning so much more mobile. Alongside webcasts, there's also coursework which deals with the difficult concepts and complex demonstrations. The department was asked to develop a website for the H1N1 epidemic and we were asked to do it so it related specifically to NUS students and staff. And we worked with CIT to develop it and we met with them and they showed us all the different options available and we decided to go with the website and they were very quick in developing the website, really great feedback, it was a really good experience. For me, the most important function of courseware is that um, I can set students on learning tasks on the web and they can learn on their own and they can come back and I can use the classroom time for discussion, uh, engage in interactive teaching. All these activities are linked through IVLE. Using IVLE, CIT guarantees accessibility 24-7. So learning at NUS never stops, even in the event of an outbreak like SARS or H1N1 flu virus. Okay, CIT's video conference has been very helpful in a sense that we can connect to students and faculty in MIT uh, over the internet and we can really see and hear them clearly and it helps us to discuss a lot of things which, has, which wouldn't have been possible otherwise if we didn't have the connection. With distance learning, I can interact with professors from MIT while remaining in Singapore. The online presence at NUS also encourages networking. There are NUS communities where you can share and exchange photos, files, and discuss issues. Or you can create your own IVLE community based on your professional or personal interests. Well, we've been using NUS Wiki for our project work, and we find that it's a very collaborative platform that allows students to share their knowledge freely as well as to build a scaffold to complete similar tasks in the future. 
You can also blog about your project experience and the progress of your project on the NUS blog. You should also check out NUS Wikisign, an online repository for all in NUS to collaborate and to share on information. There's also NUS YouTube for video sharing. The beauty of using Wiki NUS for me is that while my students are doing project work, I can follow what they're doing, I can add or edit or make comments. But with CIT's support, info sharing isn't just restricted to text. CIT provides a comprehensive range of audio-visual services including photography, multi-camera video coverage and production, as well as various video courses for both staff and students. One of the main things I needed from CIT was the, the, the technical expertise and the equipment. But I found the biggest benefit came from the people themselves, from the, from the perspective and the expertise that they shared to enable me to, to really get what I wanted in the finished product. Uh, every aspect was professionally done and they did an excellent job with the editing and putting the whole package together. We were very pleased with their, with their service. CIT provides the technology and distribution platform to take this content to global online audience. CIT has reached out to other network platforms. Even as it provides a variety of infotainment channels to the campus community, it has created one for NUS, a TV network channel for campus news. For all its achievements, CIT has earned itself a few firsts in educational technology. Yet it's not resting on its laurels, but looking ahead into the future. CIT is also preparing to harness the computing device of the future, the mobile phone. It will also be location aware, detecting where you are, what you want and sending it directly to you. CIT. Harnessing the power of technology for more effective teaching and learning.